Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Polybridge 3. Today we are building three real life bridges within Polybridge 3. However, this time we are not using the Wheel of Bridge tune. No, that has been kicked out the window. I'm picking the bridges because today we are focusing on British bridges. Chips and gravy. Now, I'm going to start off with the most famous one. So you'll probably recognize this one. I hope at least. And right, so this bridge we have, we have Matt and Paddy. They're waiting to get across, but there's there's river traffic that we cannot disrupt. And this bridge is called a bascule bridge, which is basically French for seesaw. You stupid English with your Yorkshire puddings and your chips and fish. Because uh, yes, it is going to be a drawbridge to get out the way of the river traffic. So let's start by just putting some road in to try and space this thing out properly. So we want to add some pillars. So I think we'll add one sort of there-ish. Of course, pillars need to sit on rocks. So we've got rock there. Uh, sort of made a stronger shape there. <laughs> All right, so then I got some foundations. And basically, I'm building like a tower. Uh, now, I can't just cross brace these. I mean, I could do that. That is a bit ugly, though. Uh, not that I care how it looks, of course. But uh, we do want to sort of try and make this semi-realistic looking. So if we just do that, then hopefully that will stay up. Yeah, so we've sort of made like a little a little window. So if we just build this up a few times, I mean, you should start to get the idea of what bridge this is going to be by now. But if I grab the curve tool and go between those and sort of come down like that, I can then fill these with hydraulics. But I think I sort of want to do that myself. So what I'll do, I'll grab cables and I'll go from each of the road pieces straight up vertically where it intersects that curve. And then I can move this curve up a bit because it sort of does that. And basically, if I do these in hydraulics, I can just connect all those together, then go straight up like that sort of thing. And then just connect this top side as well. And then all I need to do is just cross all of these over. Sort of like that sort of thing. Get rid of my curve. And then hopefully when I press play. Yes, that is holding the road up. Love it. Right, so next up, I'll just do the same down here. So now all of that is held in place. And I can move this boat to the middle. Which will probably be around there somewhere. And then I just add the sort of points so we got that sort of thing. Now, I'd really hope you, you probably would have guessed this by now. But if you haven't, don't worry. Don't worry. Another clue is the location of this bridge. This bridge is in London. It was built at like the end of the 1800s, which is just insane that like stuff like this could get made. And like it's still standing. But yeah, I think something like that is good. So let's just grab all of this. Copy to the other side. Boosh. Put this bit of land in the right place. So we end up with that. And then we've just got to try and sort out this. Because as I said before, we need hydraulics. We need to get this out of the way. So what I'm thinking, if we go like down here, sort of like that. Turn the grid off and press that against the side. All right, then we have a working bridge. But no one raised the drawbridge. So to actually make this raise, I've got a little contraption in here. So I'm going to expand that one. Copy that over to this side as well. And then in the settings, I just need to add a hydraulic phase and turn on the hydraulic controller. And basically, I need hydraulics to go before the boat and then after the boat as well. So if we press play... Oh my goodness! Oh no! I forgot all the hydraulics were turned on. Thankfully, I'm not a real engineer anymore. I just, I just do YouTube now. That does make me think. If I turn on unbreakable... Oh! <laughs> oh no! The road does not like that. Whoa, that was insane. Oh no, Matt and Paddy, what are you doing? What are you doing, Matt and Paddy? No. Anyway, what I need to do in the hydraulic controller, I need to literally remove all and then just turn on that one and that one and do the same over here. Oh, I, I nearly forgot as well. I need to add a split joint down the middle and tell that to disconnect. Okay, so now hopefully that will just raise up. Oh, that's a little bit too high. It's waving at us. It is waving at us. And then let's just make that expand 30%. Okay, so now that raises up. The boat can get underneath. Love it. And then once the boat has come, that lowers. And then Matt and Paddy get across. Is it strong enough? Let's turn the stress on. Oh, I went up to 94%. 
but we just about made it. So yeah, in case you didn't guess, this was the Tower Bridge in London. It took eight years to construct five major contractors and over 400 workers working every single day. And basically, they did like a massive competition to decide like how to solve the problem of crossing one of the busiest waterways in the world. And there were 50 different designs submitted. And like some of them are pretty funky looking. And it's, it's just weird to think like London Tower Bridge uh, could have looked very different. And yeah, this is Tower Bridge, not London Bridge. People often get them confused. But yeah, this is Tower Bridge. You can, you can tell that because there's towers. And that is a very, very bilfy bridge. Uh, but let's move on to another British bridge. And this one is the bridge that I drive across the most. It's probably actually one of my least favorite bridges. Um, at least until recently when I found out it's actually the longest bridge in the UK. Uh, so I've done a very, very long span. And uh, basically for this one, like a lot of the bridges we have done on this series, it's just a load of concrete foundations. And these are just piled into the ground so that it's nice and stable. But of course, not much of a gap between them. So if you want to get a if you want to get a boat underneath, you're going to struggle. Hence the middle part of this bridge. Uh, and for this middle part, I'm going to be putting my road pieces in as small as possible. Oh, I can't get away with can't get away with twos. I can get away with threes though. So yeah, let's just copy all of these. So basically, we got a whole lot of that. Loads and loads of different road pieces. And in case you hadn't guessed, the middle section is going to be cable stayed. Now, this one is not 45 degrees. It's sort of like, I guess, that sort of angle. And what I'm thinking, if I do, rather than doing like the three blocks that we've got, if I do two like that, then hopefully these will fit. So I'll just do a whole load of cable drawing. And then I can head back into the blueprint menu because I need some pillars. So rock underwater to support this all. Oh, I can make them big. I didn't know I could make them big. Okay, I can then do that. And then I think what I'm going to do for this one, we're just going to shove anchors like all the way up here. So we end up with something like that. I then need to copy all these anchors. Hopefully I can duplicate. Yes, I can. Shove them on the other side. And then I still need more anchors because there are cross beams. Although actually, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Let's head back to the bridge builder. Let's grab some road. And basically, we want cross beams like, I guess if I do a box like that. Yeah, that's good. That is good. What isn't good, though, is the color of these cables. It's not realistic. Again, this is one where I'm going to have to use a bit of hydraulic just for the color. So I think what I might want to do is just draw a line, do these down to minimum length, and then fill. But once it's on one side, I can then just copy to the other side. And then there is another pillar over this way, so I can do that as well. So I guess we use the power of editing so you can see this time lapse. Whereas for me, it's just happening very, very slowly. Right, and then we grab this, we copy, we flip to that side, and then... We end up with that, which looks like an absolute mess. But I think when we... Oh, no. <laughs> I was going to say, when we press play, it will look really, really good and nice. Um, now, I think the reason that happened is because this arm isn't connected to anything. So whilst it should stay there, isn't... Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm not actually sure if this is going to work. I thought this was going to be a nice, quick, easy one. Let's grab all of that. Copy to the other side. Right, but then I think we're done. So if we press nope. play... Oh, my... What? <laughs> oh, no. That's not good. All right, let's turn the speed right down. Let's turn the stress on and try and work out what is happening. So the roads are just getting, like, ripped apart. I think it's because in Polybridge 3, if you add lots of nodes, I think they actually, like, stretch more than, like, fewer pieces would. So, yeah, basically, you can see them. All the, all the cables are, like, sagging like anything. They are not tight. Now, I can turn on unbreakable, though, and then if I turn the speed up, then that should maybe <laughs> potentially settle. You can see, look how curved the road is. And yeah, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really look much like the original. If we just compare that to the photo of the original, this is the, the Prince of Wales Bridge, it's now called. It was called the Second Seven Crossing. So you can see in the background of the photo, there's, there's the first one, a nice suspension bridge. This one, pretty ugly in my opinion. It's not even painted, it's just like concrete. But uh, yeah, the, the cables on here are meant to be like light green um, but since they don't work i think what i'll do grab all of those 
boosh, delete them out of existence. And I think we'll just bung cables in to see if it looks a bit more realistic. And then comparing that one to the photo, yeah, that does look a lot more realistic. And look at the stress. It's not even stressing at all. Matt and Paddy in the G-Wagon safely across the other side. So yeah, this bridge connects England and Wales uh, across across the Severn River, which is a very, very silty sort of area. I don't even know if... I assume boats do go up there. I feel like I've never seen a boat go up there. Uh, but a lot of the time, the, the tide, like, when it goes out, this whole... This whole width is just mud. But yeah, this brings us to our next bridge, which isn't actually very far away from this bridge at all. In fact, the river the next bridge crosses joins on to this river, the River Severn. But right, this next bridge, it's high up in a gorge. So we need to build that gorge first. So I'll grab these bits of terrain and sort of do... I mean, it's pretty, pretty steep, sort of like that. And then on the opposite side... Uh, there is a road at the bottom that it crosses over, but then, yeah, back up a very steep gorge again. Now, this is a proper British bridge. Opened in 1864, so before Tower Bridge. So this is an old boy, yeah, and it's over 200 meters long, which is pretty, pretty big. It's over 100 meters high. It just baffles the mind that people could have built that back then. Like, there's hardly any sort of machinery and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is a suspension bridge, so not a cable stayed like the last one. So this one, we will boosh the road into position. And then we just need to sort of try and work out where we want our pillars. If we call that the middle of our bridge, 9, 10, 11 pieces. So I think something like that should be good for the tower, uh, which does mean I need to move my gorge a bit because the gorge only sort of starts like after the tower. Like the tower sort of sticks out on the cliff a bit. But it's sort of more like that, I guess. So then to hold this tower up, we have pillars underneath. Yeah, like that, blocked off. I then need to copy this over to the other side. So we end up with something like that. Our huge gorge. Uh, that is not safe to drive along, Matt and Paddy. You both wait there, please. Wait there, Paddy. Good boy. Wait. So now we need to go from there over to there. And we need to curve this down. And I think what I want to do, I want to go straight up to these, like we do with every suspension bridge we do. We'll get the vertical cables in first. And then I think what I'll do, I'll just do like two hydraulics between them. And again, we're using hydraulics for the color. It's not architect like, it's what engineering used to be like back in the 1800s or something. Now, this has sort of three layers of like, I think it's just iron rather than steel. But uh, we sort of just want to grab like, that entire thing and just copy it upwards although it doesn't look like it's gonna fit i could do yeah i could do one there and then just manually squeeze the others in the middle i'm just putting these in the gaps in the middle All right there we go that <laughs> that is quite a chunky chain yeah i now need to connect these to this tower so what i'm thinking if we do something like that, I then just need to like copy this to the other side. So something like that. It's worth noting these do actually go like into the ground. Yeah, but I reckon I can probably get away with just shoving like a like a pillar there. Wang some anchors in. It will be fine. Uh, I then need to delete the, the high cable I accidentally copied. All right, then copy this over to this side. Boosh. And then watch because this is going to be a catastrophic failure. <laughs> Oh dear. So if we just turn the speed down and then we watch this with the stress on, you can see basically there's so much weight from these chains that the, the towers just crumble. So what I may want to do is replace these with steel. Again, not entirely sure if this will be strong enough, but we'll see. But basically the, the weight of the road, the weight of all the cables, they all just hang from the pillars. All right, so they're attached. Let's press play. Oh no, the road breaks. The road is snapping. There's also a bit snapping up there. I think that's because these are getting like pulled apart. So if you think all the weight through these cables, all the roads, they're sort of this bit in the middle is getting pulled apart. So let's steal up those bits. I'll do the same over this side as well. But yeah, the road is still breaking. If we watch, you can see it's because it's falling a bit too much. Now I do just wonder if I were to like stitch all these cables together because they are meant to be like one sort of piece. This is going to add more weight to the bridge, which isn't ideal, but it may stop the road falling as far. Yes, it did. Yeah, because in the middle... No, Matt and Paddy! In the middle, we're only hanging off that bottom cable. The top two cables are just there for, like, visual. And as we know, 
if it's just there for visual, it's architecture, so it must be destroyed. Alternatively, engineered like this by just stitching it up. I'm quite concerned about the amount of weight I'm adding to the overall structure, but... Well, we'll see what happens. All right, okay, so that's all the cables stitched up now. Oh, it is holding. It is holding. What's the stress like as it goes down the middle? Are we good? 99%. Oh, no. So they broke. The bridge did hold. But yeah, I think there was just... Oh, look, it's the vertical one. So yeah, I need to do the vertical up to there. Now we're all stitched together. Those top bits are taking weight as well. But I think we've gone and done it. Now, I'll be the first to admit this isn't the most impressive looking bridge. <laughs> But compared to the real one, it is very impressive looking. This is the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. Now, it's actually a toll bridge. It costs you a quid if you want to get across it. Well worth it, though. And basically, the famous engineer Brunel first designed this bridge. But there was, like, riots and stuff, so it never got built by him. And then later on, some engineers sort of took his design and sort of tweaked it a bit. Um, and that's, that's because he died before it, before it was finished. And quite interesting, the first bungee jump happened in 1979, or at least modern bungee jump happened off this bridge. But yeah, I just find it mad that this was built like in the 1800s. Like, look how tall it is and stuff. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. For now, I'll say peace, love, and bridges. And next time, we will return to the Wheel of Bridge tune. So make sure to add your suggestions to the comments below. Um, I won't be so British and patriotic next time. Anyway, peace, love, and bridges. Bye.